I'm Margaret Daw, and I'm an associate professor in the English department at Wichita State University, and I'm director of the creative writing program. Um, the writing program, we offer two genres. Students can study poetry writing, or they can study fiction writing. They come to campus, and for the first two years, they're studying in a graduate workshop in either poetry or fiction. They're working in a class with, say, 12, 8 to 15, something like that, students. They are writing poems regularly or writing short stories regularly and hearing those criticized by, by their peers and by their professor. Then they are rewriting steadily as the years go by. This all leads to a year-long um, program where they are writing a short story collection or a novel or a poetry collection, working closely with one professor. When I wrote my first book, I was very influenced by the modernists. Uh, James Joy, especially an Irish writer. My family is Irish and my grandfather was the one who taught me storytelling and his stories were very um, fantastical. He, um, he worked for the telephone company installing phones in the Empire State Building. And one of his big stories, this is an example of the fantastical, one of his big stories was when the plane went into the Empire State Building. Okay, so huge, huge story. Now, uh, when it came to, so I learned the rhythm of telling stories from my grandfather, very interested in language. My first book was very interested in language, but I figured out that I needed to learn how to plot stories. Yeah. So since I've been here, I have studied plot and I think that's what I emphasize in all of my classes now. Yes, my teaching influences my writing in that uh, every once in a while my students are having a problem and I give them a solution to the problem. For example, I'll say if someone is stuck, can't get going writing, I'll say, okay, you have to write for 10 minutes straight without stopping. Or I say, you have to write this story using only words of one syllable. And then I figure out that that was the problem I was having in my writing, so I do the exercise that I've given to my students. So I find solutions to my own problems. One of the nice things about a university program is students um, make friends with the writers who will be of their generation and uh, they can keep up corresponding with those fellow writers for the rest of their lives. Um, I think too they, um, they learn how to take criticism uh, and they develop a thicker skin. Technology does have an influence on student writing uh, and it's not always good. Uh, unfortunately, I think when students write only on the screen, when they type def directly onto the screen, some of their own soul is left out and uh, they also write a lot more words than are really needed. I am always telling them to print out and proofread and write all over, physically write all over the paper. So I think technology can make for wordiness. Most of my friends who are writers use email very, very carefully, use, uh, don't write extensively on email at all. Um, I still write handwritten letters to a, a friend of mine in California. He and I exchange letters 
every two weeks. Um, and we tried writing by email, and neither of us liked it, I think, very much. Um, I think it's such an in-between writing and telephoning that you can say things that you don't really mean. You'll get a lot of attention from fellow students and your professors uh, on your writing. And I hope it changes my students' way of thinking by the time that they're gone. Um, I can give you an example. I had a student um, named Doug Browning who worked on a novel set in Kansas. And he enrolled first in my plot course. And one of the books we read was Dracula. And I taught in the class, I emphasized in the class, how the writer manipulates the reader, um, getting the reader into a sweat, and then letting the reader relax. And the technical terms are constriction, scared for the protagonist, release. Oh, the protagonist is with friends again. He loved that book. He, he loved Dracula. He loved that whole concept. He came in with a totally new book once he got that concept. That's the kind of big concept thinking that I think you need to get from someone else. One of the things I also like to talk to my fiction students about is endings. Um, in the undergraduate class I'm teaching now, we went over a story where uh, a woman's working in a kind of uh, quick trip. Um, she's been there seven or maybe nine years. She feels like it's a dead end. She, the, the story goes through her really bad day. And it uh, culminates with her decision to leave and finally do something with her life. And she ended the story with her, her protagonist, a worker, leaving, walking out of the building, and uh, immediately meeting a handsome man. So we went into class the next day, and I said, let's talk about endings. Does this character need to meet the handsome man? And uh, the writer's decision reached down into her gut about what she thought was important to be happy and succeed in life. So I tell my students, endings tell everything about you.